Hey Luke here with CatsAndCarp.com and I'm going to show you how to get a super cheap fishing boat. So if you've been wanting to buy a boat, this is the video for you. And to prove my point, I'm going to go out and buy a boat and I'm going to show you how I do it, how I get a great deal, and all the little quirks and tips that come along with it. If you're going to buy a boat, it's important to know where your money goes. So let's use my other boat as an example here. This is a Gilgetter fishing cruise. I bought it brand new for $19,000, but I bought the whole package for $19,000. So let me break it down a little bit. The trailer is about $1,500. The engine, which is a gas 9.9 .9 in Yamaha, that runs you about two to $3,000. I've got a lot of extras like a live well pump and the Hummingbird 899i side imaging sonar. That sonar is about $2,000 by itself. I've got a 24 volt system that goes to an 80 pound Minko Oda trolling motor with the iPilot system. That's another several thousand dollars. On this boat, the actual boat is only like seven, eight thousand dollars, brand new. All the extras add up to nineteen thousand dollars. The engine is your biggest source of problems, it's your biggest money haul, it's your biggest gamble. So small engines are more forgiving, they're more economical, they cost a lot less money, and in the state of Virginia, you don't need a boating license if your engine's under 10 horsepower. Now taking this all into consideration, I'm looking for something with a small engine. I want a fast little zippy boat, so I'm looking for something with less than 10 horsepower and about a 12 to 14 foot skiff, you know, something aluminum or fiberglass, but I'm most importantly, I'm looking for a good deal. And some of the best deals out there are boats that are missing the title. A boat that is missing the title is not worth as much as a boat with title because the title is how you prove you own the boat. This is how you prove it's not stolen. This is how you prove the bank doesn't own it. If you don't have title, you can't register the boat, you can't drive it legally, and you may not actually own the boat. You may have paid money for something that's stolen or belongs to somebody else. So what I'm gonna do is show you how to avoid being burned by a titleless boat and how to get title once you bought the boat. And this will allow you to get some super hot deals. In addition to that, I'm gonna show you what to look for in a good deal and some of the things to look out for when you're buying a used boat cheaply. So you can see here as I'm perusing Craigslist, the boat that jumped out at me was this motor trailer boat package for $800. It's an older boat, it looks like it's in pretty good shape, but it's got the whole package. Remember, the trailer is worth a lot of money. The, the engine is worth a lot of money. So having the engine, boat, and trailer all together, that, that's a lot more valuable than just the boat. Additionally, this boat came with seats and fish finders and anchors and a lot of extras. And because there was a picture of the serial number plate on Craigslist, I could look up that serial number on the Mercury website and see whether the motor was actually the make, model, and year that he said it was. For being over 30 years old, this boat looks fabulous and it's in great shape. The reason why this boat's being sold for only $800 is that it's missing the title. My biggest concern with this boat is the 30-year-old motor. It could break on me, parts are really hard to find, and that's a big question mark. So I look at the value of this and say, once I can get title to this boat, is the trailer, the boat, and the accessories worth more than 800 bucks? And I think it's right there about 800 bucks. So even if the motor crashes out on me, I can get my money's worth on this as long as I get title to the boat. Because this boat was previously registered in Virginia, I can call up the Department of Game and Inland Fisheries, give them the registration number and find out whether there's any liens on the boat, whether it's been reported stolen, and who the last titled owner is and their contact information. Then I can go and contact the old titled owner and find out whether or not the person who has the boat owns it legitimately and whether or not it's a legitimate sale. If the last titled owner no longer lives at their old address, then I know nobody's gonna challenge my getting the new title. Catch some stingrays? Catch some stingrays? No, not this time. We're not gonna go fishing. We're just gonna get a boat. <laughs> If you find a good deal, you got to jump on it quick. So as soon as I got off the phone with the Department of Game and Inland Fisheries, I went down 
and met with the owner to inspect the boat. And I wanted to talk to him about how he came to, to own this boat, whether he knew the titled owner and what the relationship was. And the owner had all the right answers. So next we threw the outboard into a bucket of water and fired this thing up. And it started really easy and it purred pretty steady. All really good signs. So remember, if you're going to test your boat before you buy it, bring the bucket, bring the water, bring gas, bring, you know, mixed fuel, all the things you need to test the boat. Because if you don't have those things with the boat already, how are you going to be able to fire it up and see how it runs? Next, you want to look at the trailer. Can this thing drive away? Is there grease in the bearings? Is there air for the tires? You know, bring an air compressor, bring a grease gun all these things so that you can tow this boat away safely. Make sure the, the lights work. All of these things are cost money if they don't work. Oh, it looks good. Well, hey, listen, man, I'll, I'm, I'll, I got 800 bucks. I'll take it off your hands, so. Uh, cool. The inspection went really well. The trailer lights worked. They hooked up properly. There was air in the tires. They, they, uh, the grease was, was good. They, there were straps to keep the boat down, so everything went smooth as silk. So basically, after looking at Craigslist for only a couple days, I got a great deal for 800 bucks. And just two days after deciding to make this video, I'm pulling into my driveway with the boat. Oh. Look, look, back up! Wow. <laughs> it followed me home. Can I keep it? Wow. <laughs> and then, Mommy, it has an engine right there. Yeah, see, it has an engine. It has an engine. They're breeding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's, there's a kill white boat. Run, don't let me poop on my cat. That's right. All right, Tommy, we're videoing. Okay. okay. Wait, wait, wait. He needs his pants on. He well, no, he doesn't. He's not in the frame. My wife has been very patient about this whole thing, and she's just asked that I get the boat in the garage. So, no problem. It's a little boat. It should fit in the garage pretty easily. So we're going to be cleaning the garage today, okay? <laughs> oh. Once I got the boat home, I immediately filled out a request for my new title and sent it to the Department of Game and Inland Fisheries. You fill out an affidavit that you download from their website. You send a copy to the last known title holder. And if the title holder doesn't respond in 45 days, or if they don't contest the sale, then you'll be issued new title. Each state does this process a little different, so check your local laws before you buy your boat. We've bought the boat, we've got it in the garage. Let's uh, survey the damage and kind of see what we've got and uh, take a little finer look at our project here. Okay, so our trailer hitch is uh, pretty rusty. It really needs to get loosened up. It's really hard to get on and off. And uh, the jack on the trailer hitch is jammed and missing a handle. So there's the two things that uh, really need uh, fixing. Then uh, over here with our motor, the motor runs really good, but we've got no fuel line and no tank, uh, gas tank. The boat actually came with one, but the gas tank had really nasty old fuel, and I thought, ah, oh, it's just a fuel tank. I bet it doesn't cost that much to replace, so I didn't take it. Turns out they are expensive. They're about $35 to $55 for three to six gallon outboard tanks. So yeah, that was a bit of a mistake. And then the fuel line with the connectors and the little bulb pump, I accidentally left that back at the guy's house. Uh, we set it aside so it wouldn't drip gas in the car. And I left it there and that's another probably $60 for the connectors and the hose and everything. So about my first expensive mistake my first expensive mistake on this boat was leaving that behind. That cost me about a hundred bucks. So yeah, at any rate, but I ordered, uh, ordered, found some more on amazon.com to replace it. So we'll figure it out. Uh, the boat actually came with the original owner's manual and the uh, maintenance uh, instructions and all this stuff. So that's one, a really good sign of the kind of care that was taken for this uh, boat so but uh, it also saves you about forty dollars because that's how much it costs to to buy old uh, manuals i went to mercury.com's publication section and 
it's not cheap so that's that's uh, a nice little uh, accessory so uh, one of my little fixer up projects is getting rid of this this is some guys do-it-yourself rod holder this is really the only major bit of damage to the boat um, is this and you can see what they did is they just went into the live well and drilled it in and they obviously haven't been using the live well like a live well they've just been using it as storage um, so I'm not sure what it takes to get the live well functioning again uh, but I definitely want to get rid of this rod holder and, and fix up those holes in the front of the boat too you can see where there used to be a chair there's some holes in the decking where they drilled into it so that's something I want to look into repairing and over here in the back of the boat there's a, quite a bit of discoloration and it looks like they painted the boat um, at some point and didn't quite paint everything but yeah we need to get a battery compartment in here and a battery and of course the gas tank also there's uh, in the corner there's some very minor cracking and there's some of this discoloration and then there's this cracking right here you're nothing too structural I don't think but I'd like to fix it up and then there's the wiring that's just loose in the boat so uh, that and need a license plate okay the boat also came with two plugs and what appears to be a 3 8 inch bayonet adapter which goes to these old school fuel pumps and there's a cooler an extra seat base and two anchors with some rope and that's not insignificant those anchors are about about uh, probably about 20 30 bucks each so you know that's like 50 bucks worth of stuff in there and uh, there's some life vests, an extra seat, some bungee cords, an angry, an angry boy. All those little odds and ends really add up. Yeah. So my first project was get rid of that rod holder, that piece of wood that's bolted to the live well. So that was really simple. I just had to unscrew it and uh, it came off really easy and it just had the two holes in the live well, which I think I can fix. Okay, I got all these little cable runners that are old and broken. They're just on there with adhesive tape. We're just popping those suckers off. Got lots of little random holes and bits of where it's faded. And uh, we're going to see what we can do to just fix that stuff up. Okay, I also want to move the fish finder. I don't like where it's mounted. And... Uh, we're going to deal with that. We're going to move the fish finder too. I have the messiest garage in the world. But before you judge me, just remember, I've been posting two videos a week for the last 15 months straight. So, I have a full-time job. I'm a lay minister and a father. So, I'm a busy guy. Cleaning my garage has been low on my list. Okay, I have no idea where my screwdrivers are. I don't understand. Batteries always go in the back of the boat. So why is the electrical wires coming out there? I think what happened is they were using the live well as the battery storage. In order to get this thing uh, seaworthy, all I had to do was get the replacement gas can and a replacement connector from Amazon.com. And as soon as those arrived, put it in the water and fired this thing up really easy. first started the engine it was it would hesitate a little bit you could kind of feel it's like coughing I think it was kind of the old ethanol working its way out of the system but after I cruised it around and did some donuts for about five minutes it just started purring like a kitten and I just had no troubles with it since fresh gas does wonders
So it's been a little while since I bought the boat and applied for my new title and registration. And I finally got a response from the Department of Game and Inland Fisheries. They sent me this letter and basically it says that they're extremely backlogged and because of the backlog they've issued me a six month temporary registration. Additionally, I got this little package in the mail from my good friend Steve Douglas over at Monster Rod Holders and this is something I'm excited about. Ooh. Oh yeah, check this out. What is it? Oh, these are the these are the 3345 Red Devil series. Okay, these are the best catfishing rod holders on the market. And out of all the rod holders that Monster Rod Holders makes, these ones are awesome. I love these are my favorite. Well, for basically $900, I got a boat, I got an engine, a trailer, all the accessories that I need to get out on the water and start fishing. It doesn't have to be expensive to get a boat. You don't need a truck to tow it. You don't need a whole bunch of space to store it. But I'd like to do something a little bit more. I'd like to kind of, for lack of a better term, pimp my ride. I, I want to get a, maybe fix up the, the fiberglass a little bit, maybe give it a nice paint job. Uh, I'm going to put these rod holders on it, maybe get a fish finder. I'd be curious to hear your suggestions. How should I pimp out my boat? If you like that video, check out some of our other great videos, including me using my pontoon boat as a stolen Russian icebreaker and going out and fishing in my brand new boat with Tommy and having a ball. We put out new videos every week, so don't forget to click subscribe. And if you like this video and you want to see more videos like this, click like and leave comments.